at one time or the other, maybe today, maybe yesterday, three months back, two years back, you were a tourist, maybe you didn't know. On this segment today, we shall be looking at tourism and uh, in precise terms, the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation. What is tourism? Tourism, a lot of uh, definitions have been attempted. One of it I, that piqued my attention is, say, tourism is the activities of people traveling to and staying in places outside their usual environment for leisure, business, other purposes for not more than one consecutive year. A year of outbound tourism, inbound tourism, domestic tourism, Tourism constitutes a wide variety of sectors that provide products and services. Since its establishment, talking about the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation in 1976, we have heard so much. Where really are we with tourism in Nigeria? Are we walking the talk? Are we having a feel of it? We hear that tourism can make can be the cash cow for an economy. Is that true? Well, I have the Director General, Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation, Folo Unsho Koka. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Insight. Thank you very much. Mr. Koka is a visionary administrator, I'm told, hospitality and tourism entrepreneur. He's acclaimed to have attempted one project in Lagos State. He called it Retell the Story of Lagos. Well, he will tell us more on this segment of the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation. Where are we with tourism in Nigeria? So let me hit the nail running. Where are we? It looks as though we made so much noise about tourism, yet we are not feeling it in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Um, I like your definition of tourism. And if we use your definition of tourism, tourism is actually doing very well in Nigeria, but it's just not defined as tourism. If you look at religious tourism, Almost all of Africa, in one shape or the other, comes to Nigeria to pray. We realized that South Africans were coming to Nigeria to pray in such large numbers when there was an issue uh, at um, a church in Lagos. If you look at the Redeemed Christian Church of Christ, it has an auditorium that holds over a million people. And they have, I think, 187 branches in 187 countries. And they have their retreats in that site in, in, uh, on the Lagos Ibado Express. Yeah. Yeah. So we just don't term it religious tourism. But a lot of people come here for a short period of time to pray and return. Without realizing that. Without, we just don't label them as. And I, I come to what the issue is. We have both economic and business tourism. That is people who come here for business, or people who just come here from the whole of the sub-Saharan continent, Eastern Africa, and even some of Southern Africa, to buy goods and services and go back. They are economic tourists. You see, we have this definition of tourism, which is leisure. Leisure tourism is not the only sort of tourism there is. By your definition, there are different categories that we can class people. Yeah. I am a political tourist in Abuja. Okay, okay, you've limited it to one year, but I will renew every year for as long <laughs> as I can. Okay. Um, why do we have so many categories of tourism that we don't really take into consideration when we say tourism? It's because we do not have the statistics. We don't have the data who has come from where for what for how long spending what where did he stay where when did he leave how much was the value of his presence in nigeria to the nigerian economy those measurements are what will tell you what tourism has been over the years we have been fortunate to have oil and we've had oil in abundant quantities and excellent prices over a hundred dollars for for quite a few years that has made us a, a, a mono product economy that we have focused solely on until the crash in the prices the crash in the volumes 
which has made us face the reality that there are alternatives that yeah. we could face. Like there are countries that don't have oil, but are doing very well. So we are looking at that now as an alternative that we must invest in. And, and the investment is down the entire structure. The beauty of tourism is this. Every investment the government makes for its own people benefits the visitors as well. So if the uh, Minister for Power, Works and Housing improves power, builds roads and builds some, some uh, housing, it benefits Nigerians. But that infrastructure is the same infrastructure that tourism That takes me to the next question now. <laughs> 1976, I think precisely June to 2017, precisely June to, okay. that should be 41 years since this uh, commission of tourism, the commission was established. How, when can we start really seeing what you have defined? We feel it, we see it, we smell it, we drive it, we talk it, we fly it across the tiers of government. I, I, can we start feeling it? Um, I, I believe that the present administration has um, the political will and the understanding of what is required to make tourism work. Um, tourism is the quickest way to achieve some of the things we want to achieve in terms of economic growth, diversification, etc. Whether you have oil or you don't have oil, whether you have manufacturing or you don't have manufacturing, whether you have agriculture or you don't have agriculture, tourism is possible. And let me explain why. With tourism, you don't have to acquire the land and plant the seeds and wait for the seeds to grow and harvest them and take them to the market. With manufacturing, with tourism, unlike manufacturing. You don't have to acquire the land, buy the equipment, find the staff, train the staff, find the capital to manufacture goods to take to the consumer. With tourism, all the tourism assets are assets we, as Nigerians, use already. The hotels, the restaurants, all our, our, our heritage sites, our, 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 our culture, it's there. We have not, we've been a bit lazy. From your telephone now, you can package yourself one product, one price to Jerusalem, to Saudi, to Mecca, or to Dubai. Can you buy one product and package yourself from Abuja here just to Lagos? Can you imagine if even that simple domestic product of a taxi, uh, an uh, aircraft tic airline ticket and a hotel, one package. The amount of people who come to Abuja and go back to Port Harcourt or Lagos or Kaduna, wherever it is, can you imagine that product, how well that product will sell? Not only even just to the private sector, but to the public sector. Now, we have got to rethink how we also talk about tourism. I and, love and, this. And now, you go <laughs> to other climes, you see it everywhere. Even where you, you least expect, they will extort or get money from you. You pay without feeling because you could see the service. Now, in Nigeria, you go to rural fringes, the local government areas, they say no money, but money is everywhere. Yeah, we don't know how to tap into it at the state level and at the federal level. Now, Coca is on board. What will you do differently from what other people have, other persons have done within the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation to give it that that breath we are expecting to see? Um, okay, I, I, I in the next few days we'll come out with a roadmap. It's it's ready, but I'll, I'll talk about a few things. First of all, our focus is domestic tourism. Domestic tourism is the foundation on which any international tourism can be built, because it's in us consuming more Nigeria. It's us buying Nigerian. It's us growing okay. our, 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 our um, establishments and institutions that we can ever think of growing our currency and, and, and eventually the tourism or whatever agenda we have. It's probably one of the most difficult brands of tourism because you're catering to your own people. The, there's no exchange rate. There's no roaming. They probably drive there. The, the, uh, 
uh, know probably the language or the dialect or they even have some friends in the locality. So you must give value for money. So in, 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 with international tourism, you know, there the are issues with how people shift on those. But with this, now, NTDC is the master brand for tourism, the tourism agenda in Nigeria. We have created a, a sub-brand called Tour Nigeria. So one of the things we're trying to do is to take people around the different destinations by us going there and documenting some of them in the six geopolitical zones. One of the things we've done uh, is to call uh, the, 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 the Anjet, the Nanta, the EFTAN, the ITP, all the associations and bodies that represent the tourism stakeholders. Is that the and call it tour operators? Yes, okay. that's not up. And, and to ca call them to say, look, this thing has to be done in partnership. We cannot sit across the table and speak uh, uh, to the issue and, and uh, scream at each other. We've got to work together. It is in partnership that tourism, a particularly sensitive uh, thing to grow, can grow. Again, if you look at the definition of tourism, I mean, in terms of practice here, we have always never looked at the domestic tourism side. We always thought of it as foreigners bringing their dollars to come and spend so in Nigeria. Are traveling out? But our population gives us serious volume. That we must use that population in terms of what we have in Nigeria. But I want to look at the types of tourism that we've also been used to. We're used to the destination tourism, uh, uh, going to Yankari, going to the waterfalls, going to the you know, game reserves, etc. If you go to those things, when last was there, was any serious investment made in them? In simple things like toilets, you demand to drive three hours, but at least be able to go into a clean toilet. After walking around and driving three hours, you your, the minimum standard is that there must be a place where you can have a cold drink and, and something small, traditional to eat. Okay. If you go to such a place, you must you know, have access to be able to buy this as a souvenir to say, I was at X Falls or, or X Reserve. Now, those are amenities that are minimum standards to a lot of people now. Not to add, what is the state of the destination itself? When last did they invest in a sitting area? When last did they invest in anything that is around that destination? You know, you don't just drive to go and see one thing and go back. No value addition? No, thank you. You tie other things into it. It, it, it. it may be a ravine, it may be a, water, and a waterfall, and some, you know, a, a cultural village showing how people traditionally live in, 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 in the area. I mean, I was in uh, um, Uru Falls in Choir State uh, last weekend, and, you know, incredible place. Endless possibilities, all sorts of folk tales uh, surround the place. People are extremely passionate about it. But there's a 16 kilometer gravel road leading to it. That's a substantial investment that needs to be made. The headwaters, where the, 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 the original river uh, the falls, is coming from, there are too many leakages. So the waterfall is a shadow of its former self. Those leakages need to be closed. The waterfall needs to drop into a clear pool free of sediment. The onflow from the waterfall needs to flow in a okay. manner down a ravine. That Sorry, see. So, no, what, what, okay. Let me go through this. What I'm trying to say is that you need to invest in the states, the local governments need to invest in their tourist destinations for us to be able to drive the traffic by marketing and promoting their tourism destinations, that is the destination tourism. In terms of the cultural tourism, I mean, we have, every time NTA does something, there's, there's been, the first thing you see is people doing the cultural dances. People are a bit tired of that. Now, the new mediums of expression in terms of, if you look at your telephone, especially the WhatsApp, if you look at what people send around to you on a monthly basis, you will, it gives you a rough idea of the mediums of dialogue and exchange now. And those mediums are what a lot of people use to consume, even to drive their cultural and destination tourism. It's religion. It's fashion. It's food. It's 
how well are you going to synergize to mainstream local government, states, and the federal to work together? Because we really want to see life. Because given the wealth of experience you have, one will expect that in a matter of maybe, maybe we're always in a hurry to see results. <laughs> uh, in, a, in a year's time, we should start feeling it. We yes. breathe, we eat, we smile, and all we feel because we start feeling the impact of tourism. Because we don't have all the time here. Yeah, yes. Uh, um, Abuja is my adopted home. So some of the things um, we have been able to do in Lagos, we will pro probably look to repeat here. Um, NTDC is a, it's viewed uh, uh, as a government agency, just not really going to do anything for anybody, but um, we will change that. Okay. Um, we have built a calendar of events, and the calendar will primarily be based on Abuja, but there are other five or so, and at least the six geopolitical zones will feel the presence of NTDC in uh, collaboration with the state governments with existing events that they have or brand new events. Um, in Abuja, for example, um, we are going to have a music festival called Nayo Nayo, which is uh, worry for like forever, forever. Is it indigenous? It's not indigenous, a music festival, but one of the things we're going to do is bring a blend of the indigenous to meet the modern on a very modern platform. So I will bring out cultural dancers to dance on the same stage that uh, 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 Whiskey or Don Jazzy will be performing on. So the sound quality, the lighting, that gives you the opportunity to capture something that is properly produced for television, okay. for you to be able to transmit. And then, you know, that's what sits in digital space, that everybody around the world will be able to see that this is happening here. Okay. And that is what invites the, the, the curiosity that brings people to travel to. To, 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 to locations. Okay. So, uh, so as a, a tourism entrepreneur, I like calling you, <laughs> you I'm told you are a hospitality and tourism entrepreneur. I've had a history. Uh, what word of assurance will you give to those Nigerians who have always felt that, oh, we have not had it there yet? Are we likely getting that through you? Well, it, as a head it's, of, it's, as a man of a head of affairs at ATDC right now? It's a partnership. If you consume less of what you don't produce, and you consume more of what you have locally here, we have a deal. I will do my utmost to ensure that we create products that are similar to what you, 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 you go out there for. Here in Nigeria, how many states in Nigeria have most of us traveled to? How many people have been to Yankari? How many people have been to uh, the... the, the, the Carnival in, in, in Calabar. How many people have seen the slave relics in Lagos? You see, we have to look inwards and understand that the, 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 there's a way. If you don't consume enough of your own, how do you expect somebody from outside? You've got to love yourself enough for extremely to expect somebody else to love you. Wait, 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 wait. I, I want, I yes. want, I want. Alaji Remy from Sokoto to take his family to Lagos to spend a week, which will probably cost him the price of one ticket if he was going to, uh, one business class ticket if he was going to Dubai. Yeah. And go to the beach, go to the shops, eat, drink, feel the flavors of Lagos, and return. He would have educated seamlessly. Seamlessly. Well, before we exhaust that, I know, I, I, I hope we'll have other segments to discuss because of the time. Mm. There are other components of tourism, medical tourism, all that. So, on the whole, we are shown Nigeria before, before I tie up this segment. Uh, That's the last word. You, you just brought up the word, the, the issue of medical tourism. To there, is, there, there is uh, there are medical hubs in Nigeria, Kaduna, Abuja, and Lagos. If you have any serious problem, you're heading to those places. If you are in the Republic of Benin or Togo, if you have any serious ailment, you're coming to one of our larger hospitals. Yes. Now, 
there is this thing that about the elite uh, leaving the country for, 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 for medical treatment. Now, we don't have it all. So there's some things that we are very competent at. There's some things that we're just not there yet. So let's understand exactly where we are. Okay. Uh, color speed is speed. Yes, we have medical tourism. We have hub tourism, aviation <laughs> tourism. You know, that uh, we can... DJ Fulurusho Koka. I'm afraid I have to stop you there. But to say that you have a lot loaded in your can, which you have to unfold to Nigerians. And I'm sure I will want to have you on Insight again for us to discuss more. We have already scratched it. The issue of infrastructural challenges there, which we have not touched. But so far, I'll say thanks for being with me on Insight. I will hope to have you again on Insight. It was Thank you very you. much. Man. I'll be back again. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be talking with the DG, Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation in Nigeria, uh, Fulurun Shaw, Koka. Mm -hmm.